So this is gonna be a really quick video. I am in the process of uh, editing some videos and I do apologize for just the lengthy time. Um, I am at a mix of, um, you know, getting back into the salon among other things. Uh, also trying to finish up a PhD program. So I do have a lot on my plate and I know that's not an excuse. However, let's get right into this video. So uh, in cosmetology school, one of the things that I've realized is that a lot of the books from either My Lady or Pivot Point don't give you guys clear direction um, in regards to what to do if the hair is too, uh, too damaged to perm or basically how could you perm hair that is very porous for lack of a better word. So I have two mannequins and I'm gonna go over uh, each one of them and basically uh, how the chemicals work the way they do. Uh, the first case scenario, I think this is a, a really good case because typically a lot of times a lot of salons get very nervous about doing a perm. You know, there's a lot of negativity associated with it. Uh, and this is because a lot of stylists that are getting out of cosmetology school, they have not done too many perms other than, you know, the mature client who's around 70, 80 years old, maybe even 90 years old, getting a perm in a set and that's it. They don't know the advanced techniques like spiral wrapping. I've seen people do spiral wrapping and totally mess it up. So this is the perm that I did in the spiral wrap video. And again, I wanna encourage people to get creative. So when I mentor new people in the salon, what I usually do is, you know, when we do our one-on-one -on -one sessions, I give them some homework and we go over, you know, how to do different techniques. And I encourage them. I'll give them a mannequin and I'll, I'll either give them a mannequin that's been bleached or, you know, it's been highlighted and I let them, you know, do as they see fit with a wrapping pattern and the solution used. And I make them tell me, why are you wrapping the hair uh, with the rod you're using? Why are you using that solution? And we have a dialogue about it. So this mannequin, or we should say this client, she comes into y'all and she has um, uh, highly processed hair. She's had high lift hair, numerous um, rounds of color put into her hair. And uh, in addition to numerous hair, color, uh, hair colors and uh, chemicals, she wants a perm. And a lot of people say, oh, heck no, I'm not touching her hair with a 10-foot pole. Well, um, all right, let's get back into our basic chemistry. What are our options? We have to know where we are. Step one, identify the hair. Okay, we know that we're dealing with porous hair. Step two, determine where you want to be. And be honest, sometimes you got to lower expectations. I would guide her more to of a natural wave, more of a spiral pattern, something that will give her body and it will look nice and glamorous when it needs to be. And she can also style it to make it a little bit more on the smoother side or blow it out. Explain to the client the maintenance, how you know you prefer to do a trim. And what I did with this mannequin was you can use a porosity equalizer. I did a protein treatment on the mannequin, um, and then I also used a, a porosity spray, which is a mix of leave-in conditioner and protein. Both of those chemicals, not chemicals, yeah, ingredients in the leave-in uh, and protein filler, you have the protein that will bind and fill the hair because porosity has holes in the hair. You fill in those holes, you also moisturize the hair. That way you're putting back in the hair what the perm might take out and you're making it a nice clean canvas to work on. So what I did in this mannequin because I wanted to do something creative is I decided to go underneath and do a smaller rod that I spiral wrapped with using peach rods, working from peach to orange to green in the front. And the reason I did this is that if you look at natural hair that's naturally wavy, typically you'll find that the hair is a little bit looser in the front and it might be tighter in some areas. And by doing this, look at how nice this looks. This looks like she kind of looks like she took a curling wand and curled her hair. And right up here, it's not too tight, it's nice and loose. That I find a lot of clients don't like when it's too tight. Now also explain that to the client. The client wants to know what you're doing. Uh, explain to the client that you wanna make it look natural or you know if she wants it tighter in the front, you can adjust for that. The other rule of thumb is that the solution used is important. That is gonna be step three, choosing your perm solution. So for this client, what I decided to do is I wanted to be a little bit more daring and I used um, Zotos, the pink one. It's the body perm, classic body. There's also an extra body. I didn't want to you know, use the extra body, didn't see a need to. No test curls required. Of course, I personally always do a test curl because on hair that's overprocessed, it will need, uh, can take the perm that quick. So the other option you could have used, and this is another option I might have preferred, it would have given it a little bit more of a slightly tighter curl was a thiofree perm because a thiofree perm has a protein base as a reducing agent, um, cysteamine. It tends to prevent overprocessing. 
It is not damage free because you can still mess up hair with it. But again, the hair was already filled. I used a leave-in, a conditioner and whatnot. Um, you could technically, and I wouldn't recommend this, more of an advanced technique, use a cold wave, but make sure that you really condition the heck out of the hair. Zotos made a fantastic perm back in the day called um, the, the blonde one or the overprocessed one. I am blanking on the name, but it was like a yellow kind of cream colored box and you would actually treat the hair with a protein treatment and a fill, put the cold wave on and it would process in five to 15 minutes. So this uh, hair was processed with the, uh, the perm and she used all the full processing time. Notice that, oh, and I also want to mention too, when you're doing an acid wave, it takes um, more of a weird shape. It's more of a slight uh, C shape instead of an S shape. So just know that it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit looser. So also be in mind that if you use a, a peach size rod, the curl is not true to rod size. It might come out a little bit bigger than intended. Um, do a test curl, kind of become familiar with how the perm works. And her hair is decently healthy considering the battery. Her ends could use a little tender care. Uh, so you probably will give her a slight trim after and just be gentle with the hair. I used a little bit of silicone to seal a cuticle. I used moisturizer for the hair and some light spray gel. And what was really cool about this is that her hair had color in it. And again, the color will fade or change colors. Her color completely faded out when I put the perm solution on. And then the minute I put the neutralizer on, it started turning like this purpley rose gold tone. But overall, I like the, um, the look of the, the perm. It came out nice. Her hair looks fantastic. It is still on her head. It is not falling out in clumps and it is not damaged. So that is the result that you get with a properly placed sp a graduated spiral perm. On to the next thing. So this is a bit of a, uh, an interesting uh, situation. This mannequin was treated in uh, quadrants. So typically what happens if you have a client that gets a very tight perm, I, I'm blanking on the uh, username right now, but this wonderful lady on YouTube, she is so sweet. Um, I might tag her uh, channel in the video below. I liked her video because it showed you that, you know, sometimes you go to a salon and, you know, you might have an idea of what you want for a perm and it could be for a variety of reasons, but the stylist makes it too tight. So what are your options when this happens? Now, you have different options. Typically, the best way to remove a perm is with another perm or with a thiochemical. And if you think about it like this, you're using thio as the chemical in the perm to unlock the bonds of the hair and you're using a peroxide to reform them. So if you make something too tight, the easiest way to do that is to unlock the bonds of the reshaped hair with another perm to, to uh, get rid of the curl, desired amount of curl that you want and you would reshape it with um, the peroxide. Now, uh, I decided to do something a little interesting with this. The mannequin's hair was super tight and you can see that in the different video. This is the mannequin that I did color on. The mannequin, uh, we're starting off, so step one in our, you know, four steps of formulating for the perm. Step one is, uh, where are you? You had hair that has been previously permed and previously colored with a high lift red shade. So you had a little bit of a higher developer. So the hair is uh, slightly porous. And then you're gonna figure out, uh, step two, where do you wanna be? You want less curl. And the client, let's say she says, I want um, a majority of the curl removed, which is gonna be very difficult. So uh, step three, um, you wanna determine, um, you wanna determine what you're gonna use. So in step three, here are your options. You wanna pick, uh, now what I did with this, I thought this was interesting. Typically, it is ill-advised to ever use a relaxer on hair that has been treated with thio. It is like cats and dogs. You do not ever do that. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat that's in there. Typically, with relaxed hair, you cannot take relaxed hair because that's a lanthionine bond. The sulfur has been completely knocked out of it. It's lost a sulfur atom, and that bond is very fragile. You cannot take that kind of hair, wrap it with a perm rod and perm it. It'll fry and it'll turn to mush. What you can do in certain cases and I do not recommend this, you could use a relaxer on hair that has been treated with thio. That is because on typically in a perm, you break about 50% of the hair to make a curl. Relaxers tend to break 70% of the hair to make it smooth or straight. So this right here on this quadrant, and you can see she's been treated with relaxer. And here was the issue in doing this. I applied it like you would, um, and I probably should have left it on here a little bit longer before applying it everywhere else. But again, with a relaxer, you wanna work quickly. 
She's got smoothness at the root and at the bottom, and she's still a little wavy. That's fine. What you want to then advise the client is to style her hair at home with a smoothing iron. You do not ever want to leave a relaxer on hair that has been treated with color or a perm, a thioperm, because you're going to end up with mush. My fear was that that would happen, and I already felt the, the hair getting a little uh, stretchy. This happened within three minutes, so I immediately rinsed it. Rinsed, and I normalized with the acidic shampoo. On this quadrant right here, I used uh, a thio, a thio for color treated hair because the hair was more porous. And the results were really not good. It took away some of the wave, but it didn't do it fully. And she still has quite a bit of her curl um, still in there from the perm. Now what you could do is maybe do it again a second time, but again, you wanna wait about two weeks, trim as much hair as possible, treat it with some protein treatments and moisture, really give it tender loving care. Now on my two best quadrants, this is what I found worked best for hair that has been too tight with the perm. Again, both of these use thio right back here. This one was the jerry curl or the soft curl permanent. What we did here is we took a thio smoother, so just like this, except it was more of a gel one. We applied it all over. I waited for the hair to become smooth. Then what I did was I rinsed the hair and I did a gradual um, sized uh, perm rods. I did green rods peach rods, and I think I did a few purple up here just to show you the texture. And you can see right here, she's got some nice loose curls and waves. It looks very natural. It looks very healthy back here. It's got shine to it and it's absolutely fantastic. No breakage, no damage. And our client who wanted straight hair, so remember I mentioned that this client wants straight. This was the best result that I've gotten right here. Look at how nice that is. It feels incredible. It is super smooth, it's not damaged. This was basically using a very old technique that they did in the 1980s and 90s. You would take the client, you'd take them back to the shampoo bowl, clarify their hair. While their hair was damp at the sink, you would apply uh, the cold wave perm and just brush the hair very gently or comb it very gently. And what that would do was you put the liquid thigh What you do is rinse warm water for five minutes, just like you do a regular perm, and neutralize it with peroxide. This locked those bonds into a nice smooth shape. You would blow dry the hair, flat iron it um, with just heat protectant. Again, do not do this like a Japanese straightener because you're gonna end up breaking the hair. Just that little bit made this hair wonderfully nice and straight, and she has absolutely no curl left. So if you compare this to the first quadrant with Thio, which is you know very frizzy still and um, maybe not what the client wanted, or the relaxer, which kind of left the hair very limp and dull and lack of shine. The soft curl perm and the cold wave perm, just liquid perm solution combing it, are the two better options for this client. So let's say the client wants pin straight, go ahead and do the liquid perm. Let's say the client uh, wants more of a natural wave or to reduce the perm that she has. Soft curl perm, again, your processing time may vary. So... When I was kind of going through, kind of making my own little system for this, my four steps is number one, where are you? Number two, where do you want to be? Number three is going to be solution used. And number four is going to be processing time. And it's important to make a note of this in your client card. So you're going to write exactly the client's history, how it worked, and what were the results. Processing time is very important because know that processing time is going to be very individual to the person and their hair type. Some people might have more cuticle layers than others. That impacts the perm. There are some people with uh, naturally pin straight hair. Their hair is a little bit longer, takes a little bit longer to take the perm. Others uh, takes, you know, really quickly. So again, always be checking for um, the processing time to happen. The soft curl perm is a little bit more of an advanced technique, but I'm gonna be doing more videos with that um, because I think it's a technique we need to become more familiar with because I find that in this whole industry, people are super, super, you know, black and white with their textures. You know, if they wanna get a, um, a relaxer, they either want it pin straight or they don't want it at all. Or they, if they want a perm, it has to be super, super curly or they don't want it at all. And there's an always nice little middle ground right there. So you can take really curly hair and make it nice and wavy or kind of give that more natural, ready to go uh, wave look. So it's all this um, really cool things that you know you can have in this field. So I hope I explained everything correctly. Um, with this experiment, just remember that in the back here in these quadrants, it was thio, liquid thio, cold wave. This used thio, this was a, a soft curl permanent system. It was a cream form. Uh, you, you put the thio relaxer on, you would smooth it, you would rinse, you would then lotion wrap the hair. So you would take uh, another solution, which contained thio, the, what they call the booster, 
you would uh, squeeze it on there, roll the hair in the rods, let that process, check for the S pattern, rinse again, and then you would apply the hydrogen peroxide or what was called the shape locks. So remember, thio, thio, and over here in this first quadrant, thio, then you would neutralize with peroxide, neutralize with peroxide, neutralize with peroxide. When it came time for the sodium hydroxide relaxer, it was apply the relaxer, check for enough curl to be reduced. You never ever wanna go 100% straight with this chemical because it's no joke. And then what you did is you normalized. For sodium hydroxide or any hydroxide relaxer, you never ever ever use hydrogen peroxide. You will cause such a disaster. What you do is you normalize with an acidic uh, shampoo and that's all there is to it. Also know that when you're doing um, a sodium hydroxide relaxer, you want it on hair that is, is dirty. You do not want to do it on hair, you know, that is, um, you know, freshly shampooed or damp. You know, heaven forbid the client's scalp will be on fire because it is a very high pH of about 14. Everything else uh, that I used because it contained thio, you want a clean base. Thio is a chemical that will react to any metal that's in the hair and some horrible things will happen if there's a reaction. So at thio, you always want to clean the hair. I always consider thio one of the best clarifying agents because in certain shampoos, they will put it on color removing shampoos because it is gentle enough with a small amount to cleanse um, hair color out of hair. Thio in high amounts can be a hair remover. Believe it or not, that's what Nair is. Nair is a, a super concentrated dose of thio. Thio in a moderate amount is an acid wave. Thio in a stronger amount can be a cold wave. Thio in an even stronger amount will be a thio relaxer. So it's all about the percentage of the chemical, the pH matters as well. Um, what I would like to see myself, or maybe I'll end up developing something someday, is I would love to make a system, like a smoothing system, something that would be a perming system for bleached and overprocessed hair, because I know everyone wants natural waves. I want to do a, a system, like a cold wave system, for those who have you know high lifted hair, bleached hair, highly porous hair that will be like a soft curl perm system. And I wanna do something that will be a uh, th thio system for smoothing the hair for damaged bleached and overprocessed hair. Because today's hair is overprocessed for the most part. Most people have hair color in their hair of some uh, shape or form. And I find that a lot of people uh, want these chemical services that a lot of us don't feel comfortable doing because we don't know the science behind it or the chemistry behind it. And I hope to share with all of y'all um, how to make this happen. I hope y'all like this video. Please comment, please like, please share my videos, please subscribe, help me grow my base. And if it's not too much trouble to ask, please help with supporting me by purchasing a channel subscription. Now the way I'm doing this, pins, more tools, and the products I need to do these demos. Thanks y'all for everyone who tuned in to watch this. I will post this video so y'all can enjoy this. My uh, membership for this channel will go to publishing exclusive videos for everyone. So I'm gonna probably work it more like a Patreon. That way I can put that money towards doing the things that I love, which is this. Because everything I've been doing is completely out of my own funds. Um, and some of them were you know, donated, which I really appreciate the donations. Um, I, especially from the ladies at Sally's, they were incredible. Um, our store sadly had since closed, but uh, had great memories and that's what matters the most. So what I like about this field is building those connections. So everyone have a fantastic Memorial weekend. Um, why not end it on a positive note? So comment down below. If you have any veteran that served in any wars, uh, whether it be current or the past, comment um, their name and we will honor them. So uh, salute and y'all have a fantastic Memorial Day and honor our veterans.